So Maru, you are uh, involved with the uh, Up and Go uh, mm -hmm. platform. Mm -hmm. uh, can you share some more background about, or first maybe first, uh, so what is Up and Go? Sure. Um, so Up and Go is a web application that helps connect customers with worker cooperatives providing residential cleaning services in New York City. And where does the idea, where does the, the idea come from? So the idea came from a few different places. Um, but I work at the Center for Family Life. I'm the director of the Cooperative Development Program. And for the last 12 years, we've been developing worker-owned cooperatives with um, the low-income community and immigrant community of Sunset Park, Brooklyn. And in that time, we've learned that, you know, even though worker cooperatives can be successful over time, it takes, it takes a lot of effort for little businesses to enter the market, uh, especially when their budgets are very low because we're trying to maximize wages um, for the workers. Uh, so we had a, a kind of like realized that the, the market question and the, the marketing question was also something that we needed to, to focus on and seeing how the, there was a transformation in the cleaning industry in New York City with other platforms coming into the fold um, with a lot of you know, money um, that worker cooperatives didn't have. We, we were approached by um, the Robin Hood Foundation who had been a, a partner of ours, um, a funder of ours over uh, for, for 10 years uh, to think about how can we create a platform for worker cooperatives so that we could resolve this issue of you know, competing in that market. Uh, so this idea came about about two years ago and we started doing a feasibility study for six months where we talked to different cooperatives in New York City about this idea of creating a platform and, and, and thinking about how to structure it in a way that made sense for them, that could be useful to them. Uh, and it was really great to see the nine cooperatives coming together in different forums to share ideas and to talk to each other. Um, and then with that, we created some prototyping with our partner Colab, um, which is also a cooperative. It, and they helped us develop the initial um, site. Uh, and then we launched a beta, uh, we had a beta launch at the end of 2016. And when you started with the, or when you all started with the idea, you probably had some assumption. Yeah. Which assumption were debunked uh, while talking to the, uh, the, mm. the, the, uh, the cooperatives? Yeah. So we, we sort of assumed that um, we could have we create a, we could create a, a, a platform and sort of like highlight the workers' um, stories and, and feature each worker and say, hey, my name is Maru and I come from you know Puebla in Mexico and this is I'm so passionate about my work and something to help connect workers to the customers. But when we pose that idea to the co-ops, they said no. We don't want that. We want to profile our cooperative because we identify with our cooperative very strongly, and that's like you know we helped build our own cooperative. So we want to be shown on the website via our co-op, um, eh, and so that really changed like the initial wireframes that we have presented to them, and so that really changed how we envision the, the platform. Um, eh, also. We, you know, we had the question about like, do we use just one umbrella, right? And then sort of like um, remove each co-op's identity. And they were like, no, we need to have like each co-op needs to be portrayed in the in the platform, and then um, we can operate on their up and go, but we still like our own cooperatives. So yeah. those are like the two big things that we. Um, assumed at the beginning in the in the initial prototyping uh, of up and go so that was also a challenge in that you already started with uh, building wireframes based on assumptions and then realized that the uh, your target group wasn't uh, thinking up uh, yeah yeah, yeah so we yeah we, we we drafted those wireframes based on like the customer experience and then when we talked to them and we we're like no okay this needs to be something if it's going to be owned by the by the co-ops that we that you know that are part of up and go they need to make the decisions about like what this looks like and and how they they are portrayed um so that really switch the directions and then seeing the excitement from the co-ops also was really great because then they were really participate, you know, they participated and engaged through all of the stages of the process. And because uh, also when the Robin Hood Foundation uh, 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 talked to you, then you were already aware of the situation and there was also kind of a sense of urgency of doing something. Yeah. Did you also saw this sense of urgency uh, at, uh, at worker co-ops? Yes, I mean, so worker cooperatives, uh, 
that we, the, the worker cooperatives that we work with um, had been doing marketing via flyering and word of mouth, and that required a lot of effort. And it took a lot of time for us to incubate new cooperatives and for the cooperatives to to reach their potential of like you know having a, a, a like a lot of clients and, and and more stable work. So there was an urgency in like ensuring that that time was reduced so that the businesses could be more successful earlier on. Uh, so we were thinking about how can we do that, and the strategy of like joint marketing via an online platform was just like an amazing solution. Yeah, so so it's it's uh, it goes beyond only the the, the IT infrastructure, but also uh, uh, into more a umbrella brands, yeah. uh, joint marketing, uh, yeah. so that you can reach also a a, a broader uh, audience. Correct. Yeah, and then in the process, we also um, learned that um, newer cooperatives joining up and go as they launched was a great strategy. Is a great strategy for them to grow significantly and we've seen that in practice already with two cooperatives that are just starting and one of them started with the official launch of up and go in may of 2017 um, their income trajectory for that business is increased exponentially with the trajectories that we had seen with other cooperatives in the past so we already you know we saw that immediate um, a change a, and the members are very proud of that of their own trajectory and they're seeing the, the, the future and the value of up and go yeah. So, so, and at what way uh, is uh, is their growth now now going after new uh, co-opted joints? Uh, growth of, uh, of 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 new customers, or I think the goal, um, and this is something that the members express also, is that they, they want to grow. They want to provide these opportunities for more cooperatives, um, and also we can do that by also increasing the number of customers. So it's like a marketing strategy, right? Like increasing visibility of up and go, but also ensuring that more cooperatives are able to join up and go um, and that could be done in two ways one by the creation of new cooperatives right in the cleaning industry or by a, the onboarding of existing cooperatives and figuring out how to do that um, a, so that more cooperatives can be on the platform yeah and and and, and because the, the work co-ops uh, uh, they are also competitors of, of, of each other in, in a kind of a way and, mm. and uh, do they also mm. see ads like that? And, and if yes, how mm -hmm. do they then uh, see uh, uh, yeah, how to operate under one umbrella? Yeah, that's a great question. I think it w it's an easy thing, it's an easier, an easy concept to think co-ops are competing with other co-ops for the same client. But the reality is that the residential cleaning market is so vast in New York City that really the, the co-ops that occupy 1% of the entire um, market share they're not competing with each other necessarily, but we're competing with like the big platforms that are um, not doing like the best for workers necessarily, but that have a lot of um, financial support. Uh, so when we think it like that, then there's more opportunity for collaboration, which is what we're seeing. So like what the, the cooperatives are doing on Up and Go, they're sharing best practices, they're learning from each other, they're, they're creating a space where um, they can see each other as professionals and learn from each other's uh, best, you know, like best recipes for like organic soap or, you know, how to clean this one thing that is so complicated. For creating policies and standards, for developing policies that are innovative. For the first time, cooperatives develop a cancellation policy that was able to be enforced via up and go. Um, and everybody thought that was a great idea. So I think there's more potential for collaboration and, and um, improvements of each other's systems when they come together and operate on their one umbrella. There's also challenges, of course, right? Um, but I think there's more beauty in the collaboration than the competition that we could yeah. see. You know? Yeah, yeah, I agree. And how do, how is the structure of, 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 of Up and Go? Is it a separate ent entity? Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so Up and Go is a cooperative of cooperatives and it is a separate entity. So the member cooperatives are the ones that um, manage and govern uh, Up and Go, uh, and currently the Center for Family Life, which is the organization that I work uh, for, we coordinate a lot of the pieces of Up and Go, um, but we respond to and are guided by the cooperatives. And in the end, will there also be a, 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 a team of people who are dedicated full-time uh, uh, responsible for Up and Go? Uh, yes, I mean, currently, Two and a half members of my team are fully dedicated to Up and Go. Um, 
and the goal is that we have obviously people and, and it's self-financed and uh, so that people can can, can coordinate and operate um, up and go yeah. yes yeah and how is everything funded uh, currently we receive some funding from the Robin Foundation and the Barclays Bank um, and they've been doing the initial seeding money um, to get us where we're at, which is a fanta has been amazing. Uh, and then we're, we're seeking for more funding opportunities to continue to develop more technology for next year. Uh, and also the cooperatives agree to have a revenue model where they make money, you know, they, they leave money in, on the platform so that the platform can become sustainable uh, with every job. But the difference with other platforms and what they take from each job is, is really minimal because we're trying, again, we're trying to maximize, you know, the, the take home pay for the workers. So currently for, say, if your cleaning costs $100, um, $5 are for fees and two, $2 of those $5 are what stay in up and go. Yeah. And uh, one solution could also be because in the end you get your starting costs and it's really great to find some partners to, uh, to help you uh, yeah. of, 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 of getting that covered. But yeah. then you also get the, the ongoing operational costs also of the development of the site but also Correct. Uh, the marketing and these kind mm -hmm. of things. Um, you want yeah. to keep your percentage uh, low so then the maximum amount of money goes to, to the workers. Um, yeah. Is there also an option that you may be going to skill uh, up and go to other cities or, or, or uh, getting more work co-ops on mm -hmm. board? Yes, so uh, in, in the imagination of up and go is, uh, is that it can be an umbrella uh, marketing tool for multiple industries. So we started with, with residential cleaning because there were more residential cleaning cooperatives in New York City, um, but the, the potential is Fast, it could we could we could grow into a different industry and have more cooperatives in that industry grow, uh, join up and go. It could also be a tool that is used uh, outside of New York City because we are also hearing from other parts of the country that are where there is a presence presence of residential cleaning cooperatives that they want to be able to use up and go. So, I think in the future is uh, anything is possible. Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> and now, uh, what are your key challenges? Key challenges, I think, are um, trying to do everything well. Uh, meaning, you know, we're meeting with the cooperatives on the regular basis and ensuring that the, that they feel comfortable and they are sharing and that they feel more ownership of Up and Go. Um, and I think we're there. Um, but that takes time. And then we also need to make sure that the marketing pieces and the technology is built in a way that is reflective of like what we are hearing from customers and the, and the members. Um, so it's a lot to, to, to juggle I, sometimes. Yeah. <laughs> um, but I think, um, yeah, so I think that's operationally that's a challenge. Uh, and also because each cooperative maintains their own internal systems right now, we have different systems that we need to operate with. Um, so that's something that can be improved, and I think we're looking to do that in, in the future. Yeah, and, and, and from a platform perspective, what is the added value of tapping into the worker co-ops? Mm -hmm. From a customer perspective? Uh, from a platform perspective. Uh, my assumption is that the challenge for many platforms is that they get quite some cost in, in, in checking quality, mm -hmm. uh, quite some cost in building community. Mm -hmm. I think the, uh, the, the added value of a worker co-op is that there is already a kind of internal Culture mm -hmm. is an internal quality control, but mm -hmm. when, you, when new people join, mm -hmm. they they will check it. Mm -hmm. uh, so, so at what way maybe the question would be, at what way can uh, tapping into work co-ops make it easier to uh, to, mm -hmm. to build and maintain the platform? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, so, the worker cooperatives and the, the worker owners that I talk to take a lot of pride in their business, and because they're owners of their business, they want to make sure that the, every that the quality that they provide is of the, uh, you know is the is the best possible quality so they have an like an inherent um, connection and, and desire for that um, eh, and so I think every cooperative has wants to provide the best possible service and um, I think so that's not necessarily a key challenge is just ensuring that everybody's understanding that qu what quality means is the same thing for you is the same yep. thing for me and making sure that 
um, the customer experience is the same no matter which cooperative is providing the service. So I think those conversations and fostering the space for those conversations to happen is where, um, where, where, where it takes time no, to, to develop systems and policies. Uh, and they're currently onboarding another cooperative and so they're getting better at sharing what it is that they value and how they do cleaning so that um, it's a seamless process and, yeah. and it doesn't require a lot of extra training, right? Because you're assuming that the cops are training their members. So up and go is just sharing processes that they can all use. Yeah. And do you also see a role of governments in, in the, uh, yeah, fostering the, the work cops and also a, a, a more fair work, fair work in the uh, platform economy, in the gig economy? Yes. Um, so we've been very fortunate that in New York City we have a very um, supportive council of worker cooperatives. We've been uh, the, the council has been allocating funding for worker cooperative development for the past four years. We're going into our fifth year, um, so that says a lot about you know sort of how they're envisioning fair work, how they're envisioning small business development. Um, and the inclusion of um, communities that are usually excluded by services that the city's providing. Um, and so, so I think that is one way that the government can continue to play a role. And there's un recently there, there, there's a new office that supports workers and where workers can um, share any issues that they're having in the workplace. So I think there's different avenues for, for the government to, to play a role. I think. Um, the more the government understand how cooperatives operate, what their challenges are, and sort of we remove those barriers to entry for like city contracting or um, certification of certain, you know, certain certifications, um, then worker cooperatives can be more equipped to, to thrive yeah. in, 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 in the ecosystem. Um, uh, yeah. And last question I, uh, where I'm curious about, uh, that's, uh, that's price. Mm -hmm. Because uh, mm -hmm. uh, you really want to give a fair pay, yeah. and some other platforms they have different opinions about that, yeah. and they also <laughs> operate with lots of venture capital uh, mm -hmm. money, so yeah. they can offer services below cost price. Mm -hmm. So, at what way do you also convince your your uh, customers, the end customers, mm -hmm. to uh, to hire somebody uh, yeah. of a work group and a hop and go, uh, yeah. and not somebody uh, from a more expensive platform model? Yeah. Another great question. Um, so the marketing that we've we've been focusing on um, first understanding who the customers are, who would use a platform to connect with worker cooperatives, right? Uh, and we what we find is that people are using worker cooperatives because of the social mission um, that cooperatives have of bringing wealth back into the community and being able to, you know. Um, receive fair pay and, and receive uh, all of the benefits of being in a co-op and being in charge of uh, your labor. Um, and then the other piece is around quality. So people who use Up and Go um, are using it because they want to support worker cooperatives um, a, and also are looking for someone who can come to their house where they can feel like comfortable with and, and, and feel like the work is, is the, the quality of the work is really great. Um, and so those are the two pieces that customers in, on, on Up and Go are, are currently talking about, like why they're valuing a, a Up and Go. Um, and so we need to do a transformation of the industry to really value domestic work and, and just this kind of labor so that it's not such a, a convincing strategy, but rather like a not w what it is, right? Like we value workers' time and we value um, the work that they're doing, so we're going to pay what it deserves to be paid. And it's not like a conversation, it's just like a yeah. thing, right? Like, it's like, yeah, it cost me about $150 to clean my house. That's great, you yeah. know? Yeah. Uh, so, so I think we need to do more work in educating customers, but I think Up and Go is a great avenue to do that. Great, okay, good luck with that. And thank uh, you. Thanks for your interview. Yeah, no, thank you.